Chapter 4. Cool. Jerry sprawled on his bed with his dog, Sasparilla, and stared at the page in his science magazine minutes before. He had been studying the most recent issue of Ultimate Cool that he'd picked up at the drugstore. He had gotten bored with it and replaced it with his favorite magazine, The Amazing World of Science. Learn about Newton's second law. It was on top, it was on the top page 23. Build a hovercraft. What with the motion of an object? I could do that, Jerry murmured, stroking Sasparilla's nose. Sassy, which they called her for short was a curious mix of terrier and spaniel. She lay with her head on her paws, her tail thumping the bed ready as usual to spring into action if the situation called for it. Jerry studied the picture of the hovercraft. That would be an awesome project. Probably the kind of thing Stephen Hawking did when he was a kid. The famous physicist stared down at Jerry from the poster on his wall. Next to Hawking was a poster of Albert Einstein. These were Jerry's heroes. His bedroom door burst open and six-year-old Melissa charged in. Giggling and threw herself on the bed. She was followed by her friend Rachel, who stood quietly just inside the door. Show us a trick, Melissa said. I'm busy, Jerry answered. We're bored, Melissa announced. And Mom's on the warpath. The paper carrier threw the paper in the bushes again, and it took Mom a half an hour to find it. Hey, how come you're not wearing your glasses? I'm trying to get used to not wearing them. Can you see without your glasses? Not very well. How come you want to get used to not wearing them? Leave me alone. Melissa scrambled off the bed and ran to the far wall. How many digits, she asked, holding up four fingers. What? Jerry was still reading. How many digits am I holding up? Jerry didn't look up. Two. You didn't even look. Go away, Melissa. Not until you show us a trick. I promised Rachel you would. Jerry put the book down and sighed. Okay. He'd been working on a science trick anyway, and he wanted to see if he could pull it off in front of Melissa and Rachel. First, get me a bucket from the basement and a pitcher of water. Come on, Rach, Melissa squealed. The girls ran out of the room. Jerry went over to the cardboard box where he kept all the materials he needed for his science tricks. He pulled a plastic cup out of it, then went to his desk, picked up an index card, and slid it into his pocket. When the girls returned, Jerry said, put the bucket on the floor where, here, Melissa. Okay, now you guys sit on the bed and watch carefully. I've been working on increasing the power of my mind, Jerry said dramatically. I'm going to make the water in this glass, do exactly as I say. The pitcher of water, please. Melissa giggled and handed him the pitcher. Jerry held up the glass and poured it full to the brim. An ordinary index card, he said, pulling the white rectangle from his pocket and holding it up. He placed the card over the rim of the glass. Then, sorry. Then, carefully, holding the card in place, turned the glass upside down. I order you to stay inside the glass. Jerry carefully let go of the index card. The water stayed inside the glass. Melissa and Rachel gasped 
and clapped. After a few more seconds, Sherry said, I order you water out of the glass. The water splashed out of the glass along with the index card into the bucket. Wow, Jerry, Melissa squealed. How'd you do that? I told you, Jerry said, shrugging. I've been working on the power of my mind, and it's a very powerful thing, you know. Amazing, Rachel whispered. It's a trick, Rach, Melissa said. Don't be too impressed. He never tells how he does it, but it was fun, Jerry. Come on, Rach. Melissa skipped out of the room with Rachel close behind. Jerry smiled. The trick had worked perfectly. He drilled a tiny hole in the plastic glass yesterday when he first read about the trick. His finger over the top of the hole, the water didn't fall because the air pressure pushing up on the card was a greater force than the gravity pulling down on it. When he wanted the water to splash out of the glass, all he had to do was take his finger off the hole. Then let in air and the air pressure was the same inside and outside the glass. Gravity took over and pulled the water into the bucket. Jerry's mother appeared in the door. Jerry, there's a phone call for you. You're kidding, Jerry said. His stomach fluttered a little. Who would be calling him? N no, I'm not kidding, his mother said. And after you hang up, let me know. I need to call our paper carrier. Okay, Jerry said, distracted. He wanted to know who was calling him. He hurried into his parents' room and picked up the receiver. Hello? Flack? Brenda McAdams. She sounded... Hi. He said, listen, she said, I was just watching TV and there was this woman who ripped jeans for the stars. She ripped jeans? Yeah. You've seen famous people on TV wearing jeans with tears and frayed hems? Yeah. Well, a professional jeans dresser probably worked on the jeans to make them look that way. You're kidding. No, I'm not, Brenda said. Anyway, this woman gave me some tips on how to make jeans look lived in. If you want to, we could get together and I could help you rip your jeans in the coolest places and make them look worn out. That sounds good, Jerry said. Would tomorrow after school be okay? Yes, indeedy. See you, Jerry. Brenda hung up. Jerry shook his head. He was amazed at how many details went into being cool. He had a suspicious feeling that even after all his research, he had just, he was just beginning to scratch the surface of coolness. Everyone was seated when the bell rang, signaling the beginning of language arts class. Everyone that is except Gabe. He looped through the door a few seconds late and headed for the back of the room. Gabe, Miss Robertson said, you should be in your seat by the time the bell rings. Gabe grinned. I was in the bathroom. The girls giggled and the guys smirked. Miss Robertson said, we're going to start the year reading short stories. Do any of you enjoy reading short stories outside of school? Jerry made a move to raise his hand, but he realized what he was doing. Five students raised their hands. Do you have a favorite author, Brenda? Miss Robertson said. Ray Bradbury is my favorite short story author, Brenda said. I love The Man Upstairs the, and The Dwarf. Those are excellent stories, Miss Robertson agreed. Bradbury used the language exquisitely. Jerry glanced back and thought he saw Robin roll her eyes at Cinnamon. Bradbury was Jerry's favorite short story author, too, but he kept his mouth shut. I like short stories, Gabe said. The shorter, the better, and one with lots of pictures. Hey, how come books we read don't have pictures anymore? There were giggles from some of the girls. What a dope, Brenda murmured. She was facing forward, so only Jerry heard her. 
Books without pictures are still filled with imagery, Miss Robertson said. A skillful author will use words to create pictures in your head. Gabe covered his head with his hands. That sounds painful, he said. The class cracked up. Miss Robertson was not amused. Gabe, if you have a comment, please raise your hand. He raised his hand. Yes, she asked. That sounds painful. Some of the kids roared with laughter. Jerry was star starting to feel sorry for Miss Robertson. Gabe, Miss Robertson said, in the future, I hope your remarks add something worthwhile to the class discussion. You're not in elementary school anymore, are you? Gabe raised his hand. Yes, she said. There was an edge to her voice. No, I'm not in elementary school anymore, he said. More kids laughed. They have such a mouth. Miss Robertson frowned and wrote Gabe's name on the board. Your behavior, Gabe, forces me to start using my check policy. One more smart remark, and I'll put a check after your name. That earns you a detention after school. Gabe continued to grin, but he shrugged. He stayed quiet through the rest of language arts and social studies classes. He didn't need to act out anymore. His status had risen with just a few smart, alecky remarks. After social studies class, Gabe strutted out of the classroom, surrounded by a half a dozen admirers. Cinnamon walked along next to him, looking up at his face, beaming. Brenda appeared at Jerry's side. Can you believe it? The guy's almost brain dead. And look at the attention he gets. You've got to admit, though, Gabe's pretty, Gabe's cool, Jerry said, and funny. I think he's a jerk, a gorgeous idiot jerk. You think he's gorgeous? Sure, but then he opens his mouth and ruins everything. Yeah, Jerry said, but he was thinking maybe he could think of some funny things to say in class, too. Miss Robertson didn't like it, but maybe it would get Cinnamon to notice him. Gabe would probably like it, too. Just a few well-placed smart remarks, and maybe he'd get the attention of the cool crowd. He'd have to think about it.